Hi guys, I hope everybody's having a wonderful Friday. Um, I have been wanting to do a live video or a video talking to you guys about my experiences and talking to you about um, how I started my nail business. Pretty much just talking to you about all, all the information that I have gathered throughout all these years that I have been in this industry. And in today's video, I wanted to actually show you a set of nails, but I decided not to um, film a nail set um, a set of nails because I was feeling feeling a little bit sick. As you can tell, I have a cold sore. So I decided that for this week, I was going to do a live video on my Spanish channel and as well on my English channel. So I see everybody's saying hello. So hi, everybody. I am so excited to see you here. And in today's video, I wanted to talk about how I started in this industry, how I started my own business, how I became successful, and all of that good stuff. And we are going to start by saying that by no means I am on top of the world when it comes to the nail industry. I still have so much to learn, but I have advanced and um, I want to share with you guys how I got here. So I'm going to start by telling you my story of how I got interested in nails and we're going to go from there. So since I was a little girl, I was always very interested in nail art, nail polish, nail, everything that have, that had to do with nails. It was my passion since I was a little girl. Um, my mom used to own a beauty salon in Colombia when we lived there, and she was in charge of doing manicures and pedicures, and I just love the final product. So I, was, I, I would always, always watch my mom, and from there, I just, I started loving it. So I learned how to shape the nails just by watching her and how to clean them properly and how to sterilize and do all that good stuff, all the basics, just by watching her. And I started practicing on my own nails. My mom would never let me paint my own nails. And what I would do is I would take color pencils and I would kind of like paint my nails with that and then go wash it before my mom got to see it. It was the funniest thing ever. Now she remembers that and she just laughs. It's hilarious. And... um. I just, I ended up learning from her. So then uh, me, with me doing my own nails and whatnot, my friends at school, I was very little. I would say I was like seven or eight, maybe nine years old. I was in school and my friends would ask me, you know, who did your nails? But of course I would take it off before my mom would see it and I would do their nails. And I was also very crafty and I would always try to sell anything at school, like lollipops, anything that would make me profit. <laughs> I was a hustler since I was a little girl. So, um, I started doing nails for my mom's friends and for my friends in school. And I would get like maybe 50 cents in Colombia when I was a little girl, maybe even less. I mean, I wasn't even supposed to charge, but I would charge, but I was hustling. So um, it was my friends and they were okay with it. And it was like the funnest thing to do ever. So from there, um, we ended up moving to the States when I was 11 years old and I started kind of doing the same thing, kind of like selling lollipops in school and doing everything, not because I needed to, but it was just like, I had to do something. Oh, by the way, I haven't taken the old set off that I showed you guys in the previous video because I've been super sick, but that's not the point right now. But anyway, I wanted to do the same thing. Um, so I'm saying I was a hustler. I loved it. I love to have my own money since I was a little girl and I wanted to do my friend's nails here. But when I got to the States, I noticed that a lot of people here don't really do regular manicures. Um, in Colombia, the hours are a little bit more flexible when it comes to working here. You know, uh, people go to work um I think they work longer hours here, and so they don't have the time to go to a nail salon and do manicures as often. And in Colombia, I mean, it is super cheap too. So it's a little bit, the system is a little bit different. So manicures and pedicures there are way more popular than acrylic nails. They're just now becoming popular. But in the States, people don't have that convenience to go like maybe every week and get a manicure or a pedicure because it's just not, it's not something that a lot of people can afford. So one set of acrylic nails that last a whole month is what people usually go for or gel polish, you know? Anyway, I um, didn't know how to do acrylics and I was like, man, I have to get my hands on this. So I was a really good student and I, I uh, got a $100 gift card from this company that donated money to the school for good students. And there was a lady that did nails that went to my mom's church and she gave me one class, took me with her to buy the basics. And I bought, of course, 
you know, I try to budget everything. I bought everything quality, but not as much product, of course, because I only had a hundred dollars. And realistically, I thought I, I was a millionaire with a hundred dollars back then. And now I'm like, dang, if I would have ever known, <laughs> it was the funniest thing ever. But um, I bought the basics and I started practicing. She only gave me one class. And then from there, I started practicing every single day. Like I, I would get yelled at every single day because my mom would be like, Camila, why does the house smell like acrylic? And I was like, mom, I'm practicing. It was so funny. So from there, my mom... Um, you know, she just pretty much let me do her, let me do my thing. And I started practicing on my nails, but my nails were so brittle at one point that I started practicing on hers and I started practicing on my friends. Guys, their nails would fall off. Literally like the next day they were lifting and they would fall off. And I had no idea what I was doing wrong. The lady had taught me how to apply acrylic, but she didn't teach me how to prep the nail. That is super important when <laughs> applying any type of extension. Well, I didn't know that because with a regular manicure and pedicure, I mean, you just clean up, but you don't really prep the nail, right? We don't use sanding bands or anything to remove the shine. So I started watching YouTube videos and that's where I learned. So I learned how to do nails way before going to school. And I would just practice on my friends and, um, I wouldn't charge at the beginning. I just wanted to practice, practice, and, you know, just get it, get it down, you know, and, and, and I finally, I finally learned it wasn't perfect. If you guys compare my work from back in the days to what it is now, it is completely different. Every single day, every single minute that you put into working on a project definitely makes, makes a difference. And, um, me, of course, working all these years in the nail industry, I have gotten a lot better. Um, I didn't get better overnight. It was a long process because acrylics is one of the hardest things to apply because of the powder to um, the liquid to powder ratio. And so once I learned, oh my God, I was so, so happy. I just wanted to do everyone's nails, but not everybody would give me the chance because I was still in high school. I mean, I'm 23 and I learned when I was like, 15 or 16. And I mean, I started practicing before then, but I learned when I was like, maybe, yeah, maybe like 14 or 15. And nobody would let me practice on their nails besides my friends, but it didn't matter because I was like, I just love this. And, you know, I'm just doing it for fun. So I would do my own nails and it was just a fun thing to do. And I would do my mom's and finally they didn't fall off. The day they didn't fall off, you guys didn't know how I felt. I was super excited because I was like, I finally got it right after doing it so many times. So they say, if you fail and you let that failure bring you down, you're a loser. But if you let that failure bring you up and actually give you more motivation to keep going, then you are a winner. Failure doesn't mean that you guys should give up. It, sh it means that you should try harder to get better results and put in your mind that you can always do better. So that's what I put in my mind. And I was, I was a super harsh critic on myself. I mean, I, I am, I'm, I'm a perfectionist and I shouldn't say that because there is nothing perfect in this world. And I try to put that in my head, but I'm a perfectionist with everything. And I just strive strive for excellence in everything. So I knew that even though I was doing a decent job back then, that I could get better. So then I started practicing more, practicing more. And right when I graduated high school, um, I was a rebel. You guys don't know this part about me. But I ended up, you know turning 18 years old and I thought I had the world in my hands. I'm like, you know what, mom? I know everything. I couldn't wait to be an adult now. I wish I was a kid again. <laughs> Funny how things work, right? You think about your future and you're like, oh my God, I can't wait for my future. I can't wait. And you get so desperate. And when you're in the future, you weep about the past. That's that's just life. So anyway, that was me back in the days. I was 18 years old, a rebel. I was like, mom, I got everything figured out, figured out on my own. I don't need anybody else. And my mom was like, trust me, you don't. And I was like, yes, mom, I do. Anyway, I ended up moving out of my house. So of course, my mom and I had like a rocky relationship and it was because she wanted the best for me, but I did not see that. And um, you know, I try to go to school, as I'm saying, I was always a good student. So I always kept my grades up. I graduated with honors from high school. And so my dream was to go to, a, was to go to a university and do maybe like to be a dentist, to be a doctor. Um, 
I don't know. I just had so many other ideas in my head and I never thought that the nail business was going to be my thing. I just, it was just, just my hobby when I was a little girl and even in high school when I learned how to do the acrylic nails. So I never thought that it was going to be a thing for me. But when I noticed that I, I couldn't go to school because I needed my mom's information and, you know, all that, you know, me being a rebel didn't really work out. And I did not have life figured out the way I thought I did. <laughs> I had to do, I was working at a pizza place at the time and it was just not for me. And I was so desperate to go to school and just do something productive with my life. And it wasn't working out. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go to school and get my nail license in the meantime while I can go to a university and get a degree. Well, so when I did that, I opened up my Instagram account. I opened up Facebook first and I started working on my friends again and on myself and, you know, telling people here and there that I was getting my license. And once I got my license, I started charging. Um, I always charged good prices from the beginning. Um, I asked around to see what people would charge around my town. And that's how I kind of like got an idea and based on the products that I was buying, the, the time that I was using, the attention to detail that I was putting into the client's nails and, you know, the service that I provided, I came up with my own prices. They were a little bit more than regular nail shops. And a lot of people at first said, no, like, who is she for us to pay? And it was just, I just didn't see it working out. And so I was super frustrated. I would cry myself to sleep every night because I was like, this is not going to work out. Nothing in my life is working out right now. And I refused to go back to my mom and tell her that she was right because I was just, I was a kid. I was a teenager and I'm still a kid. I'm still super young. I'm 23 years old, you know, so I still don't have life figured out. I'm still learning. It is a learning process, but I have matured a lot compared to what I was back in the days. So, um... I just, you know, nothing was working out and um, Facebook didn't work out for me. So I remember one girl gave me a chance from it. She went to high school with me. And when she gave me a chance, she and I was doing her nails. I started working from home, by the way, from a room. I had roommates and in my room, I did nails and it, it was just like a, you know, a little apartment. And that's where I started. And uh, the girl who came, she was like, oh, my God, Camila, you know what? It's really hard to find someone to do good nails. And you are you actually do a pretty good job. Why don't you open an Instagram account? So I told her that I had opened up a Facebook account and that it really wasn't working for me. So she was like, no, trust me, Instagram, it's, it's booming right now. So you need to get your hands on an Instagram account. And I was like, oh, yeah, like, whatever. I'm not going to listen to that. And I just, you know, I was really stubborn and I did not listen to that until my brother, he, I always say he's the brain behind the masterpiece because I have learned so much from him and he went to school for business and marketing. And so he gained a lot of knowledge in school. So the knowledge that I needed for myself in school, he actually went to school and he did it for me. See guys. So it actually worked out. <laughs> and it was the funniest thing because everything that he did was related to what I needed in the future for my nail business without even knowing. So it just worked out so perfectly. Anyway, um, so my brother talked to me and he was like, Camila, let me tell you something. In order for you to be successful, you have to start putting your work on social media. And he was like, look, I've never seen your work. I'm not going to follow you right away because I don't know what you do. Um, but I'll follow you if you do a good job. And my family wasn't very supportive at the beginning because they didn't know my potential. They didn't know. They just thought, you know, it was a hobby. They were looking out for me. They wanted me to go to school. They wanted me to to just stop being a rebel and just go back to my mom's. And I was like, no, but anyway, everything ended up working out just fine. My family is super proud of me. They're super supportive right now. And I decided to listen to my brother that one time. And I opened up my Instagram account. From there, I started uploading a picture consistently. I started taking pictures where you could see the details. It was, there were clear pictures. I mean, they were not the best at the time, but they stood out from the rest or a lot of nail pages out there. So, you know, I started getting followers and followers. And from there, I started getting people wanting to come to me. And then I got my first client, my second client. And then from there, I started getting more people. And then before I knew it, there was this guy who noticed my work. And he, at the time, had like 50 or 60,000 followers. And he shared my work. And I was like, oh, my God, this is a celebrity sharing my work. I'm so excited. So a lot of people 
from his page started following me. And a lot of people that, you know, just, excuse me, ended up seeing my page because of him, they ended up coming to my page and started following me. So before I knew it, I blew up and I had like 10,000 followers and I was like, oh my God. So I called my brother and then he was super excited for me. He was super um, helpful. And from there, he started helping me. So after I started gaining a bunch of followers on Instagram, so of course, you know, a lot of companies started asking me if I wanted to review their product or if I wanted to give them a shout out and if I wanted to work with them. And also a lot of people started asking me for YouTube and I was like, YouTube, wait, that's a whole nother level. I have no idea about, you know, filming. I have no idea about lenses, cameras lighting it's it's a whole production behind every single video a lot of effort and a lot of work goes into each and every single video just filming the way that you have to position your hands it's completely different than if you were working regularly on a client it's it's a it's a task let me tell you but it has been so worth it for me because when i opened up my youtube and i started doing more research about cameras and stuff and i started bringing you guys content YouTube opened up more doors for me because more companies started noticing me from here. So more companies wanted to work with me and I've gotten to go to Australia. I've gotten to go to, um, I've been to Las Vegas to like a bunch of places to teach. And it's just been an amazing experience that I just, I never expected. Um, it really hit me by surprise because I had no idea that this was going to happen to my life. I just, you know, I I just saw it as a hobby, but I'm so happy that it worked out. So then, um, you know, from this channel, a lot of people started asking me to, to make videos in Spanish. So I started doing that. And now I have another successful channel, thanks to all of you guys in Spanish. So just, you know, from here and there and, and all the ideas that you guys have given me, I have established the nail screen empire. And I mean, without you guys, it would have never been possible, but I want to tell you guys and motivate those of you who are afraid to start because I was super afraid. I had everything to lose. I had to choose if I wanted to buy acrylics or if I wanted to buy a sandwich to eat. And it worked out. Sometimes you have to make sacrifices in life for things to work out and you have to be consistent. And let me tell you guys one thing that if you are consistent and you are putting up really good work or people see that you're getting better and you're trying to um, achieve something good and trying to service people with something worth it, people will not mind paying your services, traveling to you. That would open doors for you because not a lot of people pay attention to detail. Um, there are so many doors that are going to open for you guys. If you are consistent, take your time. If you value your custom, your clients, I should say, if you use good products, like I cannot stress that enough. Um, I, of course, as I was saying in the beginning of this video, am not where I want to be right now. Of course, I want to grow more. I'm working on my products right now. I'm working, you know, my YouTube. I'm working and I'm still working with my Instagram. There are so many things that I'm doing at the same time. I still work hard every single day. By no means, I am rich. So I don't want anybody thinking that. <laughs> uh, I plan to be one day. Hopefully, God will give me that. But if not, I'm happy with myself, with the way that things have worked out for me and the way that you know so many so many doors have opened up for me just all the love and all the love and all the support that I get from you guys that's the most important thing to me because that's what keeps me what keeps me motivated and even though the money is nice it doesn't buy everything it doesn't buy happiness it just I mean, it buys, yeah, like bags and everything. I know a lot of people are going to say that that's the, their type of happiness. But I mean, the, the happiness that comes from within, from like really deep in your heart, the happiness that I feel because of what I've, I have accomplished more than the money that I've, you know, made, not being rich again, the money that I've made and all the opportunities that have opened up for me and have been put in my way 
have made me extremely, extremely happy and extremely grateful. So I wanted to take the time to thank each and every single one of you for being there for me. There is so much more that I want to share with you guys. Of course, I want to share, um, you know, my experiences working with companies. I want to talk to you about products that I have tried, trial and error things. Everything in life is trial and error. And Something, some things are going to work out and some things are just not. So don't give up. For those of you who are starting out, it, it requires a lot of practice. Trust me. I was terrible at doing nails at the beginning. My mom's nails would fall. My friend's nails would fall. So, I mean, it was frustrating. I get it. I used to cry myself to sleep, as I said before. And now I'm just like, thank God for all my blessings. And that's all I can say to you guys. Um, there is not enough time for me to talk in this video about all the other things that I want to talk to you about. So I am planning on doing a live video, maybe like once or twice a week on each channel. Um, I want to talk to you guys. It is very important about taxes. A lot of people that are self-employed in this business, makeup, anything like that, I think it will be a good idea for me to talk to you guys about how to um, take care of business like that because it is really important working towards your future, your pension, all that, uh, healthcare. So I really want to help you guys with that. I want to tell you about... Um, you know, my experiences working with companies, if I would do it. Um, also, I did open up a nail salon and there were so many experiences there too. Um, I just want to share so much with you guys. And as I said, not enough time in this video, but I will be uploading more live videos. And I am super excited because you guys joined me today. I really hope you guys enjoy this video. And now I just want to like answer some questions for you guys right here that I see on the side. Um, because I just, I don't know what else to say about my, you know, my start. It's just, it's pretty basic. It's just a matter of being consistent and uploading good content and servicing people what you show on your social media. Don't, don't like tell people that you can do something that you can't or, you know, try to just be honest. If you're honest and you're genuine, you're going to get so much further and just keep trying. If you fail, get up, dust yourself off and keep on going. Life is not for failures or procrastinators. That's my number one rule in life. And that's what I remember to myself every single day. I was not born to be a failure or a procrastinator. So with that being said, Thank you for all your love and support. And let's get to some questions. So I see a lot of people are saying hi. So hello, everybody. Kisses to you all. Uh, I am located in Wesley Chapel, Florida. So about, um, I don't know if you guys know where Tampa is, but it's the outskirts of Tampa. And um, it's, what well, I, I would say it's like 30 minutes away from Tampa. Uh, okay, so let me see. So a lot of people are just saying hi. How did how did you abo avoid lifting? So lifting, you have to prep really well around the cuticle area. Um, just make sure you use primers. Some I use uh, the hydrator for some people too. I did a video for how to do nails for beginners, and there I am super detailed talking about a uh, good way of prepping nails. Okay, are you a Virgo? No, I'm actually a Capricorn. My birthday is January 2nd. Uh, primer and bond. Okay, so uh, primer and I use the, the hydrator from OPI. I have shown you guys before. Uh, okay, so I love your video. What keeps you motivated to continue doing nails? I love nails. There are always new trends coming out. I don't know everything in the nail business. There is so much more that I want to learn and I always look for new things and I always look for new trends. There is always something for you to learn and there is always room for you to grow. So I don't like to stay stuck in the same place. I like to open my mind and see what I can gather from other, other things and just try new things. Okay, so someone said, what's the best product for nails not to lift and some good nail tips where I can shop? Um, well, there are so many products in the, in the market that work. Um, you have to play around. I would say anything quality should work just fine. 
And avoid lifting by prepping the nail correctly and applying the acrylic so it, do it doesn't touch the cuticles. Okay, how many years? Oh my gosh, she's on the other side of the U.S. from me. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay, um, how much did you spend to open your business? I don't really want to get into details about, you know, stuff like that because I think it's kind of personal. But I would just ask around to see what rent is about, is around goes for um, around your town and you know services and just do the math and from there kind of like get an idea okay so how many how many months or years did it take you where you said okay I am actually good at this now my nails don't lift and I have good structure huh um I would say probably like six six months to a year um, I can't remember exactly, but I was consistently practicing. When I have an idea in my head, guys, I'm the type of person that I don't even sleep. I, and if I sleep, I dream about it. <laughs> it sounds crazy, but that's the way my brain works. Sometimes I have to write it down because it's just I have to do it. I have to try it. So with me being so focused and so persistent, I reach my goals faster, too. Okay, so someone said, how many months did it take you to be really good in the nail industry? To be really, I mean, I don't want to say really good. I want to say like, you know, like I know I'm good and I have practice for that. Um, but I don't want to say really good because I feel like there's a lot of things that I still have to learn. But to get good, it took me about two, two, two to two and a half years. Um where's a good place to shop for nail tips, etc. cetera? Oh, man, that's a tough question because the only nail tips that I like are actually in the town where I live. So unfortunately, I don't have any answer for that. When, thank you for answering my questions. Bye, bye, love you. Love you too, sorry. And I'll see you next time if you join us. And let's see, thank you. Okay, we just read that. What other questions are there? When you get a client, how do you know what you will be doing creatively? Do your clients come in with ideas? So some people are really structured with their nails. They only like certain designs or certain looks. So those people I already know. If I were to get a new client, I mean, I don't really take new clients in right now because I'm focusing on so many things at once that I unfortunately can't. Um, but... I kind of like get to know the person and if they tell me to freestyle, I kind of want to ask them, you know, what's your favorite color? Is there anything that you don't like? Um, for example, I had one client who one time that told me she doesn't like any crosses or anything because of her religious beliefs. So those are things that I want to keep in mind. And if there is any colors that they don't like and if they tell me do whatever, then I guess, you know, they're open minded and I'm able to do just me. Um, some people are definitely, definitely different. Um, it just depends on the client. You have to like kind of feel their vibe, you know? Okay. So, um, how did you build your clientele? Most of my clientele is from Instagram. And from there, obviously a lot of people started referring other people. Some people went to, I don't know, like the supermarket and someone happened to see nails and they're like, Oh my God, who does your nails? And then they refer that person to me. So word of mouth and social media. Two major keys for any business. Did you ever do pedicures? Yes. I loved doing pedicures because I love to see the before and after. And I love to take all the crusty things off. <laughs> that sounds so gross. But it's so true. I like to make, to make things better. But you make more money. Or at least I made more money with um, acrylics than I did with pedicures. And pedicures were really time consuming too because I pay attention to details. So I just, I, I stuck to nails. <laughs> um, please come to the United Kingdom like now. I would love to take me. <laughs> I'm ready to fly anytime. No, actually, no, I hate planes. Okay. So maybe if I go like in a cruise or something and we can meet up there, that'll be better. So I have food in the cruise. But what if I get seasick? I'll think about it, but I would love to go. <laughs> okay, what is your favorite shape to do? And do you like using nail forms? I love coffin. That is my favorite shape. I think it's so classy and so edgy. Um, 
And I do like using nail forms. It just depends on my client's nails. If some people have perfect nails for nail forms and some people don't. So I just use tips. Whatever is easier. It's not about working like, oh my God, I'm going to take, you know, do the most intricate work and the lo- I'm going to take the longer route to impress this person. Like, no, how about you work smart and you impress the person by doing what's faster for you, but you're going to get the same exact result. That's what I think about in safe time. Okay. Um, do you work with Sorovsky? Yes. I love Sorovsky and I will not use anything else. I am faithful and they love me. Those crystals love me and I love them too. <laughs> okay. So what helps at home so you don't smell the monomer? An air purifier for sure. Have you ever had to break up with any of your clients? If so, how was that experience for you? Oh my God, I've had to break up with a lot of clients. Unfortunately, you know, relationships are like that. Some relationships work and some relationships don't. Sometimes, you know, they have different ideas than you do and you ju- you guys just don't match. So you have to let those clients go. People who are disrespectful definitely have to go. Don't ever let anybody talk to you in a certain type of way that is going to make you feel less than that person or don't let anybody belittle you. That's one of my pet peeves. No, no, don't treat people. Treat people the way that you should be, you want to be treated. Okay. Um, Much rather do nails. Hello from Florida. Hello, neighbor. Okay, so there are so many questions. The best brand of nail brush, uh, I say German Kalinsky. Hands down, if you watch all my videos, you guys should have that memorized by now that I always say, I am using my number 14 German Kalinsky or my number 10. I haven't used my number 10 in forever, but definitely my number 14 German Kalinsky is like life. So I love it. Um, Okay, so our nail refills good or a new set better? So definitely... Uh, nail fills are good if it's I believe it's, if it's just once or twice my clients don't go more than twice with a fill I just think it's unsanitary and the nails start coming off on the bottom I mean I even though I file them and everything I think it's better to start off fresh and my clients agree so that's what I do uh, does odorless monomer work as well to adhere a strong smell and monomer better? What is the difference? The difference is just the smell. I mean, some people use other t- type of chemicals depending on the company, other formulas. Um, but as long as it's quality and you, you use the right products, then you shouldn't have a problem with lifting as long as you um, prep the nail correctly and apply the acrylic correctly. Hello from Poland. Hello. Well, guys, unfortunately, I have to go. I have so much to do right now. And I just want to thank you so much for being being here with me every single Friday. And I am so excited that I got to interact with you guys and that you guys love my work and you appreciate what I do for you. I love making these videos for you guys. I love inspiring you, inspiring you guys, motivating you guys, and definitely Put in your in your mind that you can be better, you can be bold, you can be beautiful, you can be all the good things in life, you can be so successful if, if you put that in your mind, and you can reach the stars if you want to. Just put it in your mind, be determined, and you will achieve your goals in life. That's the mentality that I try to wake up with every single day, and it has worked for me, and definitely training your mind and focusing on the right things will get you to where you want to be in life. So with this being said, I will see you guys next Friday. Remember, for those of you who speak Spanish and want to watch, I upload every Wednesday to my Spanish channel and I upload every Friday to this channel. So I will see you guys next Friday. Thank you for tuning in. I love you guys and take, take, take a lot of care. Bye-bye.